Okay. I first, of course, would like to thank uh, Dimitri for the invitation to be here. It's a real pleasure, and uh, I would like to thank you all for being here to listen to the talk and uh, and to stream, of course, for for organizing uh, this meeting together with uh, with, uh, with with Dimitri here. So, I mean, what I what I thought about doing today is uh, to talk about the theme that we work uh, uh, very hard in the lab. So, so the lab uh, particularly works on generating models that uh, uh, mouse models of particular hematological malignancies and we try to generate them in a way that uh, that possibly in the future or in the very near future we'll be able to address questions as Jacob was just mentioning for example how immunosurveillance takes place uh, because we develop these model systems uh, in uh, in the presence of uh, uh, sufficient immune system so in the lab, we are very much interested in the germinal center B cell physiology and pathology, and particularly uh, trying to generate model systems that uh, uh, mimic uh, uh, hematological malignancies in human. And I, I just put here a very simple scheme of uh, B cell development. <coughs> and as you know, so B cells develop from the bone marrow. They, they undergo processes of uh, DNA recombination mediated by enzymes called RAG1 and RAG2, which lead to the formation of a B cell receptor on the surface of, uh, of the B cells. Uh, this happens primarily in the bone marrow. <coughs> when, cell, when B cells mature, they go on to, to, to secondary lymphoid organs like spleen and lymph nodes, and there they, are, they, can be the, they can be exposed to antigens as part of an immune response and form a reaction called germinal center B cell reaction, so a de novo structure. And this structure is very important and this, uh, for hyperproliferation of the B cells, so for uh, actually mutation of the B cell receptor that they have on the surface that can recognize a particular antigen to, to a pathogen. Um, and this is mediated by an enzyme called activation induced in deaminase, and uh, which induces actually not only mutations on the recognition part of the B cell receptor that uh, for the antigen to make it better to 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 recognize that particular antigen, but also induces what's so called class switch recombination from IgM to another subclass like IgG or IgA that is a particular properties uh, that have defined properties in terms of uh, ability to bind uh, a particular antigen. So the germinal center B cell reaction as I was mentioning is uh, uh, a critical stage of uh, the, an immune response as it is able to form uh, from there to form plasma cells that are actually the cells that are able to produce antibody to uh, recognize a different antigen and also to form memory B cells which uh, are important for a recall response when you are reinfected with a particular uh, um, antigen and of course a particular pathogen and of course they are the basis of uh, vaccination for example. <coughs> now all of this is uh, great but of course uh, there are uh, processes that ongo here at the early stage of development as well as the as a, uh, early stage that may actually prone the cells, normal B cells, to actually become cancerous cells. So the, the fact that the cells undergo processes of DNA recombination at early on in their development may prone them to processes of translocation. So that is, you know, you create breaks on the DNA of cells and these breaks may join <coughs> illegitimately with another uh, break from another portion of the genome. And if two, if a, if a strong promoter comes into place with an oncogene, you may have overexpression of that, uh, of that protein and then lead to for uh, deregulated proliferation, for example. Similar processes occur also at the later stage of the, of the immature B cells, so the processes of somatic mutation on the B cell receptor for increasing affinity for the antigen, but also for the class switch recombination, they create breaks on the DNA, and this, together with the fact that these cells are hyperproliferative, May actually, lead, may actually prone the cells to become cancerous, prone cells to acquire mutations that uh, may be at the basis of a cancer initiation. <coughs> of course, I mean, having said this, the system is absolutely fantastic, so uh, uh, we can actually say that uh, uh, that is the, the, the less uh, probable outcome is the development of cancer from this stage. So every day in your body you are forming germinal center B cells and germinal center B cell reaction against a particular antigen uh, that you are exposed to or a particular pathogen and still you are quite okay. So it may be that uh, uh, 
as uh, Jacob was saying, that the immune system itself can recognize some of these cells that are becoming mutated and eliminates them from the system. So, but in general, <coughs> the, the, the process has very, a lot of cells, uh, face safe mechanisms that, uh, that, uh, that make these cells to disappear when they acquire mutations. So importantly, uh, what I wanted to show with this slide is that you can actually associate uh, different stages of development of the cells with particular diseases from the hematological system. So while earlier stages of development are associated mostly with leukemias, later stages of development are associated with lymphomas and diseases derived particularly or having a phenotype characterized by plasma cells. And one important thing to to note is that uh, the, the late stage development of the, the, these types of tumors actually d seem to have a property which is that they have either derived from cells at the germinal center B cell stage or they have passed through this germinal center B cell stage reaction. And that kind of re, re confirms that uh, this stage of development of B cells can prone B cells to become cancers as they carry all marks of mutations that only happen at this stage. So in, the, in terms of uh, hematological malignancies, you uh, associating also with the development of the B cells, you have diseases that, uh, uh, in which a primary mutation seems to occur early on in development, as for example the case of mantle cell lymphoma with a cycling D1 uh, uh, translocation to actually to the B cell receptor locus, leading to overexpression of cycling D1 and therefore hyperproliferation. You have other diseases that seem to depend, depend on different stages of uh, development of the B cells. To, uh, in this is the case, for example, for follicular lymphoma, where you s it's known that uh, early translocation seems to occur at, uh, at, at this, uh, this stage, where it, B cell 2 is overexpressed. But then malignancy actually only occurs if another hit uh, takes place, and this second hit is known, or this uh, second or tertiary or, or uh, uh, fourth hit may is, needs to happen through the germinal B cell reaction, as, it, as these tumors actually vary all marks of cells that have passed through the germinal B cell stage reaction. So, so with this picture, what I want to show is that at different stages of development, B cells may acquire different particular characteristics of uh, characteristic mutations. Other types of tumors, uh, malignancies, uh, seem to be primarily derived from the germinal center B cell reaction stage, and this is the case, of, for example, of Burkitt's lymphoma and diffuse larvae cell lymphoma, as well as a disease that looks like a plasma cell, so derived from a plasma cell, but has, from a cell that has passed the germinal center B cell stage uh, of reaction. And, uh, uh, and in this case, it is suggested, although it's something that is of intense uh, investigated, that maybe a primary mutation seems to take place in the germinal center B cell stage. So, um, so if you look at this picture and then you want to make models of, this, uh, of these diseases in mice, you have to, to have systems in place that allow a mutation to be targeted to a particular stage of development. If you are trying to generate a model for uh, Burkitt's lymphoma, where you have a meek translocation that is supposed to be the primary event, and this meek translocation is associated with the germinal center B cell reaction stage, if you overexpress meek from early on in development of B cells, it's unlikely that you're going to mimic exactly the process of transformation. So you have to have in place systems that allow you to allow B cells to develop normally, and then when the cells are at the germinal center B cell stage, introduce such a mutation to mimic what may happen. Uh, in the human situation. So for that we, we take advantage of a system that was developed a uh, uh, long time ago, so in which there's an enzyme that is used that is exogenous from, from, the, from uh, mammals, so mammals do not have this uh, enzyme which is called CRE, and what CRE does is recognize some sequences that you can introduce genetic, uh, by genetic manipulation in the genome, for example, of mice, and uh, that are called LOXP sequences, and CRE is able to recognize these sequences and modify the genome in that way. So I will go through it a little bit. So, if you, so what, along many years and uh, with contribution from many different labs, uh, there was many diff of these uh, 
lines generated in mice and basically using this uh, this uh, mouse model systems you can activate uh, mutations and I'll explain why using these three lines at either early development stages at either specific stages of B cell development and in particular stages that are just at the germinal center B cell stage reaction and uh, for example in the lab we are very we are working very hard to generate a Cree line that targets after the germinal center B cell reaction so there are other Cree lines that uh, have uh, addition to the Cree enzyme being expressed under a promoter that is a, of a specific stage of development that carry in addition a, a, a domain that inactivates this Cree enzyme and then basically you can give tamoxifen to the, to, the, to the animal and you can activate it not only in a developmental stage specific manner but also in a temporal manner. So let's say you want to activate a mutation using this Cree line uh, uh, one, only once the animal is an adult, you basically can give tamoxifen to the animals and this leads to the Cree B activated at a specific stage of development of the B cells. So, as I was mentioning, Cree, this Cree enzyme that you gen manipulate and generate mice with is not only sufficient by itself, you have to have a combination that of uh, another uh, mice that you cross with that carries this LOXP recognition sequences. And you can, you can do this, you can generate a new uh, genetic manipulated animals that carry, for example, a, a gene that is modified in such a way that you carry these LOXP sequences and by combining uh, that uh, mouse with a mouse that, that expresses this Cree recombinase in a stage specific manner you can delete this gene and therefore abrogate gene activity or uh, the activity of the pathway downstream of this gene so and therefore you can study, tumor, study the function of a tumor suppressive activity of this gene in, in cancer for example and this is the case for example with P53 and BLIMP1 which I'll talk a little bit about these are uh, classical uh, tumor suppressor genes so, of course, you know that not only there are tumor suppressors, but there are also oncogenes in that play the function as an oncogenic activity. So the way we try to mimic that in the lab is we generate uh, also animals that carry in, a, in the locus called in the, of the mouse called Rosa, Rosa 26 loci. And this Rosa 26 locus does not really express a functional gene. It's kind of a, a superfluous uh, locus in the mouse. We don't have it in humans. But we can modify and introduce sequences in that region of the genome of the mouse uh, in such a way that we can manipulate it, for example. So what we do is we introduce uh, into this region of the genome a sequence, uh, an exogenous uh, sequence of DNA, which carries a promoter that we wish for. Uh, a stop cassette that inhibits the transcription of this gene flanked by these LOXP sites and the cDNA of a potative oncogene, let's say. So using that, uh, that mouse that we generated now and we cross it with the query recombinase, you can delete this uh, stop cassette and therefore lead to the expression of this oncogene and try to understand what happens when you actually activate this, uh, this, uh, this particular gene in a uh, in, in specific group of cells. So we, I take here like the signaling pathways downstream of the B cell receptor and uh, uh, our, our lab but together with many labs uh, around the world have been very prolific in generating this type of, uh, of mutants or so mutant animals and activating different pathways uh, that uh, we want to understand uh, do they, if they play a function, if they play an oncogenic activity at specific stages of B cell development, but you can apply them to any type of cancer. So you can also do this in liver cancer if you have a Cree driver that activates Cree in, a in, in the liver, for example. So I'll talk a little bit of the work that we have done on NF-kappa B pathway. So talking about a specific type of uh, diffuse a specific type of lymphomas which are called diffuse libicell lymphoma diffuse libicell lymphoma is a tumor that is uh, of derived from b cells b cells that have passed through the germinal center b cell reaction stage as they carry mutations that are characteristic mutations in the b cell receptor that are characteristic of the of this germinal center b cell reaction stage and work from many different labs have shown that uh, uh, there are uh, characteristic mutations in these tumors that enforce the activation of the NF-kappa B pathway. And as you may know, NF-kappa B pathway is important primarily for survival of cells. But as, uh, as I will show to you, there is also uh, 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 processes that are downstream of the NF-kappa B pathway that are important for the development of B cells. 
So one of the, path the, one of the pathways that has been shown to be activated in this uh, diffuse rabbit cell lymphoma is a canonical pathway of NF-kappa-B. And uh, one of the things that was clear from the whole range of diffuse rabbit cell lymphomas that existed, uh, exist in the human that uh, two classes mainly s appeared. One class that have a, a large fraction of the tumors has mutations in F-kappa-B pathway, while another class that has mutations uh, in the lesser fraction of the tumor, so which is called germinal center B-cell stage and an activated B-cell stage types of uh, uh, lymphomas. So there's <coughs> within these cases and a few fraction of these, there's activation as the canonical pathway was I was mentioning, which is associated with specific genes, but also activation of the alternative pathway in a smaller fraction of the cases. So we wanted to understand actually what is this activation of nf b pathway doing into the formation and to the generation of these tumors. <coughs> And, uh, and one thing that we realized uh, now some time ago was that uh, these tumors which carry activation of the nf b pathway uh, have actually kind of a similarity with the fact that uh, tumors that uh, look like plasma cells uh, the called multiple myeloma, they also carry mutations in the nf b pathway as well. So, so we try to associate uh, uh, a situation of, with that of, of uh, lymphoma that, uh, in which the cells become locked at this stage of development with, a fa with tumors that seem to be derived from a later stage of development in the B cells. So, so the fact that, uh, that both these B cell tumors, which are derived from germinal center B cell stage and the plasma cell tumors carry mutations of NF-kappa B, uh, suggests that there may be an association between these tumors to some extent and uh, it may be a developmental impact of the NF-kappa B pathway. And if we take knowledge from uh, uh, immunology and for the development of B cells, and that's what we try very much to do in the lab, is to associate developmental processes of B cells with the development of cancers, we know that NF-kappa B is critical for actually the differentiation of B cells towards the plasma cell phenotype. And that's something that I wanted to show here. So, if you take B cells and you enforce the activity of the NF-kappa B pathway, what, hap what actually happens is that these B cells are more prone to differentiate towards the plasma cells. So here, and you can see this by, by, by doing, uh, basically what we have done was, uh, as uh, Jacob was saying, we did the staining with this dye that dilutes uh, along with the cell proliferation. And what you can see is in a control situation, you can form plasma cells. But when you enforce the nf b activity, that's actually an increase in the fraction of cells that becomes plasma cells from the B-cell stage. Okay, so, so we wanted to understand, uh, does this uh, process really important in terms of nf b pathway? Is it not only that uh, you increase probably survival of the cells, but there's actually a developmental association that we can take from this, uh, from this knowledge, from immunology to the tumor formation? So we put forward the hypothesis that uh, that uh, there this uh, um, that if you have a mutation in this tumor that actually pushes the cells to differentiate towards the plasma cells, but the tumor actually maintains the identity of a B cell, there must be a mutation that blocks this differentiation to occur. So and that's what we were searching for. So. And basically what we found was that these ABC diffuse rabbit cell lymphoma tumors not only display mutations that activate the nf b pathway, but in addition to that, they, they display mutations that block the differentiation between a B cell towards a plasma cell. And we can look at this, so, so the RF4 being a surrogate of nf b activation downstream, we saw that, uh, and together with other colleagues uh, from other labs, uh, we saw that the BLIMP1 inactivation uh, and B-cell 6 translocation occurs, and what are these genes? BLIMP1 is a critical gene for, for differentiation of a B-cell towards a plasma cell, and B-cell 6 is actually a gene that is critical in germinal center B-cell stage that suppresses BLIMP1. So we have now a situation that in, the, in the human case where we find that these B-cell tumors carry constitutive nf kappa b activation, but in addition to that, they, must seem, they seem that they must carry actually mutations that block this differentiation, because otherwise the nf kappa b activity would just push the cells to become plasma cells, and therefore you could not have a B-cell tumor. So the hypothesis that we had in at, at hand by looking at human data was that NF-kappa B is able to induce RF4. RF4 is known to induce BLIMP1 expression. And uh, we know that once BLIMP1 is expressed, the cells will be pushed to differentiate to plasma cells. 
So the hypothesis, according to the human data that was present to us, was that you can have an FKPB activation, but you require a block of uh, differentiation. Otherwise, you cannot have a tumor that looks like a B cell. The likelihood is that you will have a tumor that looks like a plasma cell. So to test this in reality and see how, how, this, how this may be the case, we, we use the systems that I was explaining to you before. So we, we generate a loss of function of this gene, this BLIMP1 gene, so that is critical for the differentiation between B cells and plasma cells. And we generated an allele that overactivates the nf b pathway. And now we want to see if we put these two components together, can we mimic what we were hypothesizing? That you can have an FKB activity, but that you require a block of differentiation for the cells to actually form a tumor. So we go back to our uh, mouse tool, and we decide to use a, an, a, an allele that targets specifically onto germinal center B cells. And you have to think that, in this case, the mouse gets born normally. There's no mutations uh, happening in these mice. But only when you actually induce a germinal center B cell reaction, you activate these mutations. And then you see what happens. So does it actually, does the combination of these two mutations actually play a role in the development of the tumor? So what we saw was that if we activate NF-kappa-B alone, so in this germinal center B cell stage, you don't really, within, at least within a period of 500 days, you don't really get a tumor being formed in these mice. But what you see is actually a strong hyperplasia of plasma cells in these mice. So as we were hypothesizing before, so if you activate NF-kappa-B per se, what you have is a situation that many B cells will differentiate towards the plasma cells, and this is not, does not seem to be sufficient to make this B cell tumor. And we can see this by just looking at plots of uh, uh, plasma cells, both in the spleen and in the bone marrow, so characterized by this CD138 marker, so that is expressed in, in plasma cells. And you can look in the spleen of these mice, and of course the spleens are enlarged, so after, the, after these 500 days, you can see that there's a very large expansion of the CD138 positive cells. Uh, and also expression of uh, antibody, so which is present inside the cells when they are becoming plasma cells because they produce a lot of these antibodies, so you can actually detect it. it is, so of course, of course, the antibody will be secreted. So, so this data tells us that if you activate an FKB b in germinal centers, at least within this uh, time frame that we analyze the animals, which is kind of a long time frame, it is not sufficient to develop a tumor or it's not sufficient to develop a tumor that looks like a B-cell tumor. Basically, you have expansion of uh, plasma cells. So if you combine now and make a curve, uh, uh, like a long-term uh, analysis of animals, when you combine now uh, the activation of NF-kappa-B pathway together with the deletion of BLIMP1, so activate NF-kappa-B and now block the differentiation between a B-cell towards a plasma cell. Now you see that there's a strong cooperation compared to the deletion of, to the inactivation of the p differentiation alone, which is mutation of BLIMP1. If you have nf kappa b activity plus the block of the differentiation, what you get is a synergy between the two factors and actually the development of a tumor so that, uh, that uh, is characterized by a uh, very strong expression of uh, RF4 in this case, so, uh, so which you see. So this is the control animal. And uh, the, this is the, um, so this is the, oh, what? <laughs> so this is the, the control animal staining. So you can see that the expression of, uh, um, of uh, 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 so, sorry. So this is the control animal. You can see the follicles that, uh, that are organized within the spleen. You know, you have B cell follicles. You can see that these B cell follicles are completely disrupted, both in the animals expressed uh, where, where deletion of BLIMP1 took place or deletion of BLIMP1 together with nf b activity. You get kind of a spread of the tumor cells throughout the whole tissue. And these tumors, in contrast to the control, they express very high levels of IRF4, as expected, that uh, are downstream of the nf b pathway. And we know the bitene expression profiling that these tumors uh, express characteristic targets of nf b as expected because they activate the nf b pathway, but also other targets or gene expression targets that are known to be expressed in the human uh, uh, associated tumor called this activated B-cell type, diffusion B-cell lymphoma. So in summary, what, what, what I wanted to, to, to mention to you uh, was that 
there's uh, this NF kappa B pathway being activated uh, uh, may drive is important for the activation of, uh, for the ABC diffuse rabbit cell lymphoma tumors, but it's known that it's able to drive the differentiation of B cells to our plasma cells. So for for the for the occurrence of a tumor that has a characteristic B cell phenotype, but uh, having activation of the NF kappa B pathway, we think that you require another mutation that blocks this differentiation that uh, would eventually take place. So in a similar uh, aspect to this, so as I was mentioning to you before, there's uh, uh, an inactivation of this BLIMP1 gene so that would uh, be able to cooperate with an f B pathway and therefore to not uh, get plasma cells uh, being uh, occurring when you activate the, the, the pathway. But we know that uh, the BLIMP1 is not the only case that, uh, of being mutated in the tumors. So uh, as I was mentioning here, only around 25% of the cases uh, carry these BLIMP1 mutations together with nf B activation. We know that there is a fraction of the tumors that uh, carries uh, mutations in the BCL6, which overexpresses BCL6 that now should downregulate BLIMP1 activity. And we wanted to understand whether uh, this is also able to develop tumor formation. So, so we found that uh, when we analyzed tumors, uh, human tumors, that uh, mutations on f B pathway, particularly TRAF3, which is now associated with a non-canonical pathway of nf B, overlaps with the BCL6 translocations, so with, to some extent, but not actually with BLIMP1. And we don't really understand exactly why this is, but there seems to be a particular association with the BCL6 translocation rather than the BLIMP1 mutations. And the hypothesis that we put forward when we look at this is that nf kappa B, again, is able to induce RF4 and BLIMP1, but the BCL6 translocation is able to block BLIMP1 activity and therefore block the differentiation. And we wanted to test this. And for that, we know that the trough 3 again, is a, is a molecule that, that is upstream of, uh, uh, that is able to uh, inactivate the, the non-canonical pathway of nf kappa B. So if when you lose trough 3 you have hyperactivation of the nf kappa B pathway. And uh, we know that this, this can be rescued by uh, compound loss of a kinase called NIC, so which is uh, important for the activation of the non-canonical pathway of nf kappa B. So these two factors are genetically linked because you can uh, have a double mutant, a double knockout of these two factors, and they compensate for each other. So we took advantage of this knowledge, and we developed the uh, uh, animal that activates the NIC kinase, so specifically. So before we activated the canonical pathway of nf B, now we activate the non-canonical pathway of nf B by activating the NIC kinase in a similar system. We combine it with an allele generated by a group uh, in, uh, in the US, uh, for, uh, led by Ricardo Dalla Favera, which overexpresses BCL6. And we basically did a similar experiment as we did before in which we use the gamma-1 CRE to activate the NIC kinase specifically in the germinal center B cells. And interestingly, and, uh, and to our uh, uh, joy, actually what we found was the similar situation. So it doesn't matter so much if you activate the canonical pathway or the non-canonical pathway of nf B, you get to the same phenotype if you do this into germinal center B cells, which is a strong hyperplasia of plasma cells, but really no tumor formation. So again, if you activate these pathways, in the germinal CNTV cell stage, they are not sufficient, per se, to develop a tumor. You require something else. And again, as I was showing before, for the canonical pathway, you have a strong expression of uh, uh, strong hyperplasia of plasma cells, and also you can see by staining of antibody. You can also see antibody that uh, a lot, uh, corresponding to the enlargement of the plasma cell population that produces antibody. You can also see this uh, expression of antibody in the, in the sero of the mice, but uh, not really a tumor is formed under this situation. If you now combine uh, the, the, this uh, uh, NIC kinase, so activation of the non-canonical pathway together with BCL6, uh, which is able to block the differentiation of the B cells or the plasma cells, what we find is that this, this, uh, this combination is very synergistic and all the animals eventually develop tumors, as you can see by the lar large spleen and the, and the spleen and the leaf nodes. Um, and these tumors, when we do gene expression profiling and by RNA sequencing, what we find is that they associate, so while the 
the, the tumors derived from the PCL6 mouse alone. They are either of, uh, associated with the germinal center PCL stages uh, or, the, or the activated B cell stage. When you activate the, canon the non canonical pathway, they actually associate predominantly with the activated B cell stage in the human situation. So, which is, of course, uh, associated with the NF kappa B activation. So, uh, it's kind of my, almost my last slide. What, uh, what, of course, we want to do with these animal models that we are developing, and these are not the, the only examples that we are developing in the lab. So, we want to generate the model systems that we think they are, uh, um, that they, they mimic in as much as possible the human situation, the human development of uh, these malignancies. And of course, what we want to now understand is, can we, un can we understand better uh, what mutations in the human situation may be really relevant? So you, when you do now, this very popular to do uh, um, all exome sequencing of human tumors. There's, of course, a myriad of population of mutations that appear in these tumors. But we think that uh, by comparing the, the, these mouse models, the mutations that we can have in these mouse models with the mutations that you find in the human, that we'll possibly be able to prioritize some mutations for further study. And this is just uh, one example that I wanted to, to, to talk to you about. So what we have done now is uh, um, we, we obtained tumors from these mouse models. We did exome sequencing of, of the, the genome of these tumors. And as an example of how we think these uh, tumors are really mimicking the human situation, we find mutations in, this, uh, in the tumors that uh, we initiated activating. We initiated the tumors by overexpression of BCL6 and NIC. We found now mutations in the MYD88 locus, which is known to be mutated actually in the human situation. And uh, so we find mutations uh, that are uh, close by a known region of the, of the genome. So uh, that a known region that is known to be mutated in human cases. And of course, now we can try to understand if this muta why these mutations appear in these mouse models and how they actually contribute to the understanding of these mutations in the human situation. Um, the other aspect that I want to make put forward is uh, going back to what Jacob was saying, is that these model systems are developed uh, uh, within a mouse model that has a sufficient uh, immune system. So we can now, knowing and having characterized these mouse models well, we can now go back and try to, try to understand the development of disease from earlier time points until, of course, the mouse has to be sacrificed because it has an overt uh, disease. So we think that these systems are are quite powerful, not only to understand comparative genomics between the human and the mouse in this case, to try to better understand the mutations that occur in the human tumors, but also to then retrospectively go back and understand how actually the tumors develop from earlier stages just after we introduce these mutations until you get a full-blown tumor appearing in the mouse. So this is just a summary. So we know that, uh, that there is a, a, a negative feedback loop between these two factors in the germinal center B cell reaction. And F kappa B pushes uh, the, the cells to express BLIMP1. So and BLIMP1 uh, uh, is able to pr push the cells to differentiate towards the plasma cell pathway. Uh, but we know that the block of differentiation needs to occur, and this, uh, uh, this is the case when you have uh, an F-kappa B activity. So when you have B-cell 6 translocation that is able to suppress transcriptionally the BLIMP1 expression. So. Okay, so another aspect that we are very interested in the lab is to understand we know that B-cell 6 translocations occur around 20% of the cases, and the BLIMP1 mutations in around 25% of the cases, but of course we are now very much keen in terms of understanding what other mutations uh, are there that uh, play a similar function to blimp one mutations or B-cell 6 overexpression to block the differentiation between a B-cell towards a plasma cell and therefore afford, allow the cells to have this high nf kappa B activity in, in, in the tumors. Okay, so I just would like to thank uh, the, the, my lab. So that, uh, of course, has been uh, is critical for any of the data that uh, I present to you. I would like to thank the, the, all the uh, uh, all the facilities that we have at the institute that support uh, in our work, and also I would like to thank uh, other collaborators that uh, either provided us with mice or expertise or uh, unpublished data. So thank you very much. <laughs>